So, I mean, you know, there's, there's a couple different things here that make the carousel job stick out. Also, what I see is a chance to work with a lot of old USA engineering. And, uh, you know, carousels were made to assemble, play for a weekend or whatever, disassemble, travel on down the road and, and open up and, and play for, uh, or, or be a ride for somebody else. And uh, it was a traveling ride. And uh, so a lot of the, a lot of the building in there was for assembly. And it's just, uh, it's a shame that over the years you get uh, a little temporary fix here, a little temporary fix there, and uh, pretty soon the, all those little idiosyncrasies break down. It's like, how much bailing wire can you put on your exhaust before you're driving down the freeway and it meets the road? Okay, setting the gap. We're going to set the gap on the lathe. we uh, just blowing off our fasteners here so we can get them in. And the, uh, the first thing I do is go ahead and I've blown this all down. Make sure there's no chips here. I take some oil and I palm it onto the fat face right here. And I give a good squirt across this area and across this area right here. Alright? Because I want to float that section into place. And also too, this oil keeps those surfaces from ever rusting and uh, it's just all around working out good. I've had this lathe since 1995, late 1994 and uh, and it's still, I, every time I pull the gap I mount it back in the same way. Now we got the uh, the gap itself over here and uh, quickie clean up here. The main thing is, is this mating surface here is 100% clean and this surface over here making sure that no grit and nothing's trapped in here that's going to fall and get into there. All right, And then in one motion lift it in here, set it on the oil Float it right in the spot. All right. Now we drop in the bolts and these two small ones go in here. All right. Grab the wrenches real quick. <laughs> we only got eight different jobs going on, so <laughs> it's all right. I'd rather be. I'd rather be crazy busy than sitting around waiting for work to come in because I was one reason or another. Um, I tell you what, before I dropped my prices down when the economy started really taking a turn, I was sitting there and jobs were far and few between. And uh, so I'm a little more generous with my. hourly rate and all of a sudden I had way more work than than I could do. Alright, we got uh, both of those I'm just rambling on. Um, Semi-tight. Semi-tight. Just so we know that there's pressure on it, okay? Now we take travel indicator, we put it on the carriage and we put the indicator down here and we like working um, this this side of the dovetail or the V slot whichever you know you wanna the ways alright and it, <clears throat> it really doesn't matter where that needle is because uh, you know just where it's comfortable for you to see uh, be able to compare and where it's at on that side and that side, that side, that side. You see it's plus over here, all right? With the rawhide mallet, I lightly tap it 
into position. Still just about a half a thousandth right there. There is no dowels that, that lock this into place. You got to just manually put it in. Sometimes hitting over here on the other side helps you relieve it. And when you get a zero right in on both sides, you're there. All right, now you go ahead. You don't remove that yet because you want to make sure that after you finish tightening it down because remember you floated it in on oil and uh, you just want to make sure that you weren't getting a false reading <clears throat> alright you saw the oil squirt up between here squeezes everything out all the way down into here all the way down around there don't be afraid of a little oil all right, I like that. I can't see the needle move from one side to the other. All right, and it feels smooth. There you go. That's setting the gap back in place. The flange shaft section that we cut off, we have in the lathe now. Uh, we've got everything all back in here so we can continue. Um, we're going ahead and we're, we're facing it off so we get a good push. And we're going to skim on this OD so that we know that when it passes through, it'll be nothing but clearance. And we're going to dress the back side of the top of this thing here so that we know that we have 100% uh, uh, clearance for this to pass through. And then we're going to go put it in a hydraulic press and press this piece out. So we have this added to our other piece. Now we're not going to take this down any farther than the other side of this cut so that we can get the exact measurement. We know that our bandsaw was 20 thousandths width. If we want to really get down to the nitty gritty. Okay, that's going to be, we're going to be, we'll be pushing on the center right there. Um, that, that's far enough. We're going to leave that so we got witness mark and we know exactly on our length of shaft. So now we're going to take a light skim on the OD here. Now that was stick walled, okay, and where that cast was stick walled right there, you can see that's a that's a crystallized brittle piece, and that's you know when, as soon as I tapped it a couple places, some of these areas just broke away, okay. Now I ground down into there, but right there is a weld that was joined with cast, or at least they thought was joined with cast. Stick walling and cast iron is, is, I mean, you know, you can do it with nickel rod. There's a lot of rods out there that actually can do it. But the amount of heat that is caused by rod, uh, stick rod, welding arc, and TIG welding arc crystallizes the surface of braze. And that's why I tend to lean towards brazing with the oxygen of settling so I'm not getting to the crystallizing temperature of joining the metals. All right, just my ob observation, and it was a, a key spot here to actually show you something like that. Okay, well, she she had walked in there quite a bit. <laughs> um, I'm glad I chose to do that instead of just continually pushing that off of there because 
you know you can feel that raise right there on the end and that would have been trying to get all the way through that whole thing I think or at least on the end of it there regardless we got it out safely without destroying this so I gotta, I'm going to clean the grease off of all of our components we're going to take a look at them as soon as I get them clean. And we are going to go ahead and measure and start uh, making the new shaft. On the guide, when that shaft snapped, it must have caused an enormous amount of torque because I've got a crack right there and this ear is cracked all the way down to there. That's like going to break off. And this crack is going to here all the way down and around over here. Now, exactly the same on both sides. I mean, it was even thrust. Okay, that one's almost there. So I'm getting ready to finish breaking those off of there. And then I'm going to take a look at them. More than likely, I'll probably leave the chunks out. And I'll fill that in with braise. And then reshape that groove right there. Would probably be the strongest way. Uh, you know, the, the well prep would have to, uh, you can't properly prep to get 100% penetration on a chunk breaking away like this. My experience, it's been better off to go ahead and build new, okay? But besides that, besides that, from this running off sides at, at, at pushing all the way over for extreme and the chain being stretched out uh, because the shaft's not running properly true, the seals now what the seal the seal sets in here and it has a shoulder a lip but it's worn out past that from here to here so to retain these rings which what I'm doing now is I'm straightening out these rings I got a couple left because they're dished and combed and all I'm doing is they're just soft metal uh, they're soft metal two rings sandwich a piece of leather and one sets in the housing here, and the other one sets in the t tightening nut here, or tensioning nut. All right, so I got all the components apart and clean. Now, I may have a piece of leather, and that leather fits that diameter right there. Um, whether I could cut a true ring of leather, it, it's hard to say, uh, it, you know. But regardless, if I have to, I'll, I'll put those two in there. So we're tapping out these rings. We're gonna. They, you can see that they've been skidded and worn and everything else. But I should be able to deburr them enough. And as long as I can retain the leather in place, there we'll be able to reassemble with somewhat of a, a semi seal in there. And we're gonna have uh, uh, you know good clean bearing. The bearing is, in fact, I, I contacted uh, my bearing supplier. Bill at Action Bearing. If anybody's interested in bearings, I would say give Action Bearing a call. Uh, they did the research. He got on with um, Link Belt, and his buddy at Link Belt said that these bearings are older than his grandmother. Well, my grandmother's 99 years old, okay? So that's kind of what we're at playing with this. This is going to go back together clean. Uh, we have all the pieces, and it's not physically broken. It is. Uh, semi moisture check in a few places but other than that uh, some grease and properly adjusted it can it can support the shaft again and uh, this is just a lock collar for it there's nothing wrong with that I might go ahead and clean out the set screw holes there deburr the hammer knocks this is a spacer that was between the carrier and the sprocket all right back to my seals <laughs> 